Uh, the screen recording is being made as part of a larger uh, webinar series that, uh, or webinar that was being uh, cast for NASIG. Uh, the NASIG webinar will be complete, slightly different context that's going to be done live here. I'm breaking it up into small sections, uh, mostly because I wanted to be able to point to visual representations of each of these topics that we're going to be discussed from within the slides. That way users will be able to go back to them later and see them. Uh, the NASIC webinars also uh, will be available to the NASIC community immediately and then they are um, open to everybody after a short embargo period. So this will give folks an opportunity who maybe aren't in NASIC or, or able to, uh, in the um, or signed up as part of the webinar to get access to this content earlier, even though there will be, you know, some slight differences given there might be questions and whatnot to come up. So anyways, this particular section is going to be addressing the topic of Mark Edit's new XML and JSON uh, profiling wizard. So one of the challenges, part of the, one of the main thrusts of uh, Mark Edit 7 and the Mac uh, OS version of Mark Edit, which is uh, version 3.x, uh, was really to start thinking about how to address some of the complex tasks that catalogers work on and see if there are ways to reduce the amount of required technical knowledge needed to be able to move forward. And so one of those places, one of the places that has been a, a common issue for folks has been working with either uh, Excel, has been really working with XML data. The mark edit is built off of the need to have XSLTs to do those transformations because nothing within the application is hard coded. So that means users have to know how to code in XSLT and that's been a barrier, an admitted barrier. Uh, additionally, you're starting to see things like this. Vendors that are providing not XML data, but JSON data. And in that case, that's actually a much harder thing to work with. A lot of catalogers aren't really familiar with how to work with JSON data. So one of the things that I wanted to try and do is to think about how could users create uh, transformations so that you could transfer, translate data in XML or in JSON to other formats, either Mark XML or Mark, and do so without having to sit down and write an XSLT or a program. Now I'm going to grant you, if you write the XSLT or the program, translation is going to be better. It just is. But I think I can get you to a point, I think we can, that Mark Edit through this process can get you to a point where the translation can be mostly painless uh, and get you close enough to what you're looking for. So I'm going to show you, walk you through the process of creating one of these so that you can see how it works. So what happens inside the Mark Tools box. So inside Mark Tools, just like other versions of Mark Edit, all the transformations that are created live in this space. So if I have a JSON file like the one I just showed you, uh, I would go to my tools and my XML function list. This is a new list here. I would then click on the XML function. This opens up a new profiler. And then I'm going to create the name of the profile I want to work with. So JSON, make this so I know where it is. So I can delete it later. And then I need to have uh, one thing in order for the profile to work. I need to have an example of the file that I'm going to work with. So in this case, I have an example. It's a, a file of roughly under 8,000 records that the vendor sent as part of their, their data file. And so it has samples of records in it. So I just need that. So I have my sample file. So I'm going to go ahead and point to the sample file that I have here. So XML or JSON. In this case, it's JSON. And then I need to give it a save file is going to go somewhere where I'm not going to delete it because this is going to get registered into Mark Edit, and then that file will be available to you um, either through export or you can actually give this file to somebody else and they can import it into Mark Edit and use it themselves. So we'll go ahead and we will create this file. So I'm just going to put it inside the NASIG webinar directory because the, the folder here because I'm going to eventually delete this. So we have our file, and we're going to say what the final output is going to be. So the final output of this is going to be Mark. So we're going to go from JSON to Mark. Let me make this really explicit. So then we go to our next step. What Mark Edit does is it reads the file that you've given as a sample. Now it's not going to read the entire file. It reads 
basically down to about three or four levels. And once it determines that it's found kind of the document level, it then reads um, four or five examples. And so here we have our root object. We have titles, and then we can see inside there's the array. And this right here is our record element. So all the data for our record lives inside that space. And so that's what we're going to select. We're going to select that because that tells MarkEdit that the data inside of that space is representative of a record set, a single record. And then I go ahead and tell it to go to the next step. And then MarkEdit gives you um, an example of what data is there. And so then you just start mapping it. So if you're familiar with the delimited text translator, the tool works exactly the same now. So I can go ahead and say, OK, for a field one, the title, that's going to map to the 245 subfield A. Um, I can give it indicators or not. Then I can go ahead and add that. I can say, OK, well, there's the author. So I'm going to go ahead and say uh, the author's in field two. That's going to map to my 100 subfield A10. Let's say we'll add that. And then we have a publisher, so we'll say our publisher that's going to go into the 264 subfield B. And let's see what else we got here. We have, uh, let's see here, a genre. So 655 subfield A. And I don't know what the indicators are, so I'm going to care. And then we have, it looks like a, uh, we'll just grab one more thing. We'll say, uh, we'll grab the uh, image, which is a URL, so that's going to be 856 subfield U. Uh, I don't know what the indicator set, so I'm just going to say 41, and then I'm going to add some constant data to that. So I'm going to go ahead and select image, and I'm going to say 856 subfield 3. And this is link to image, and I'm going to go ahead and say that's 41. It's constant data at argument, so now I go down here and find my argument. I'm going to put this first because I want that shove first and then I'm going to join those together so now they get created as a single field and I'm done. So I I've, I've, could have done a lot more. I would do a lot more if I was creating these but I go ahead and do all the, map all the arguments that I want to create and then I proceed next up and mark how it creates a transformation. Now when I go here and I look for that file there it is. And so now I have an operation that can work against this JSON file. So I can drop my JSON file there. And I'm going to go ahead and say this is going to go to MRC. It's going to translate to Mark. And then I process it. And now MarkEdit is reading the file, um, the JSON file, breaking it down. And then it's using the, the translation that was just created to create a Mark file. And so I just created a Mark 7,858 Mark records using the criteria that I just set up and the profile. Now, the records are prob th these records are going to look kind of dirty because I didn't select all the right fields and whatnot. Um, but I didn't have to create any code. I didn't have to write any XSLTs or X queries. And this file now is portable. I could take this file, I could send it to somebody else, and I could have register that file into MarkEdit so that it could be used just like any other XML or XSLT file. And so the wizard creates these kind of portable files. The hope is that by doing something like that, the, the creating something like a profile like this, that when you get JSON files, uh, you can process them directly and put them into a format that, that you're more familiar with, that we have tools for as part of our community to work with. If you're doing a, a data migration, say for example, like from PassPerfect, where the data format kind of varies based on collection and use. You can extract that data into XML and then use a tool like the profile to create a one-off that allows you to move the data into a format that you're able to work with rather than having to sit and spend weeks creating an XSLT that might only be used one time. It's really about trying to make it easier and faster to process data that lives in these formats that we're seeing more often and to do it without um, to do it without having to to have the deep technical expertise to write those translations that are necessary uh, to make it work. Now, for sure, 
if I was uh, doing this work and, and somebody was asking me, I would recommend that you learn how to use XSLT and learn how to um, work with scripting languages that can interact with JSON directly uh, or get yourself a tool like Oxygen so that you can interact with your XML and your XSLT files together really easily. But the reality is that's not going to be, everybody's not going to have the time to do that. Not every institution has those resources. So the hope is that by spending some time creating a profiler like this, we can again help to lower barriers for libraries as they start getting data in, in formats outside of MARC and continue to be able to work with them and use them, move them into uh, data structures that you're more familiar with uh, until, um, again, either uh, expertise expands uh, or systems work slightly different. So hopefully that's useful. It's been useful uh, locally where I'm at uh, for a couple of processes. It saved a lot of time. I'm hoping it'll be a time saver for other people and that as folks get more familiar with it, uh, it becomes something that, that really helps move data migrations forward and, and simplifies a number of processes for folks. So if that's useful, um, great. If you have questions, please feel free to let me know.